so nice to be here, guys. Good morning. Hope you feel well after last night's shenanigans. I actually did meet some of my two rugby, rugby colleagues who were saw me in the street and brought me into a bar. So I don't want to tell that story later. This is what pragmatism is all about, about being spontaneous and changing with, this, with the environments and opportunities. Um, so it's very nice to, to be here and talk about something that's, um, you know, Bruce Lee's been mentioned in Jeet Kune Do as, as a founder. So I started off saying, looking at, I'm trying to build a theory. And following Paul's earlier work, saying that martial arts studies, well, we need theories, like all disciplines or all fields, or, and we, hear we, we talked about the transdisciplinarity or the interdisciplinarity of martial arts studies. We can draw upon theories, for example, from sociology, it could be psychology, or anthropology. And here I'm trying to combine some philosophy that I you know, have a basic understanding on with a bit of sociology as well, and hopefully develop my own theory. But of course, you're more than welcome. The feedback from here is really important, because I haven't even started writing this apart from just some jotted notes whilst I'm travelling, which you may see from the, the mess that is this presentation. But basically it's about Jeet Kune Do, so I admit it, it's a mess. Maybe not a non-classical mess. Um, oh, thank you, oh, great. my bad jokes, I'm glad. <laughs> thank you. My students wouldn't understand that, but I'm glad you do. Um, so here we've got the idea of Sifu Lee. So you could say Mr. Lee, you could say Bruce Lee, the little dragon. So we use the certain words, you might have little dragon, okay, so he was a childhood actor. But I'm, I'm trying to emphasise that C, uh, Bruce Lee as a Sifu and as a founder. So some might call him Sigung or, or a master. And some might, you, I heard um, some discussions earlier saying Guru in Osanto. So people start using titles, certain figures in Bruce Lee's life. Okay, so we see, uh, obviously he was a Wing Chun practitioner. And his leg, he's left a legacy for Wing Chun in the sense that, you know, thanks, many ways, thanks to him, it's so popular. It's the art that I practice. Um, you can say that he was a writer. A lot, a lot of it was posthumous. He's posthumously uh, published. Yeah, pro quite a prolific writer in his, in his only 32 years. Um, and obviously was a great actor in different films. So but I'm trying to look at it as, um, as the founder of Jeet Kune Do, which in many ways you could say, is it a philosophy, is it a concept, or is it a martial art? There may be debates, because last night we discussed it with some people, that, well, is Jeet Kune Do really a martial art for martial artists? So people who have already had a foundation, like Bruce Lee did in Wing Chun. Or is it um, you know, something you could learn from scratch? That's something to perhaps discuss at the end. Um, and you see, you know, obviously wider physical tra training and culture as well. So the body's quite central here to this part of the argument. Um, so the case is, I'm using Bruce Lee, but I'm also using two other people. So what, um, perhaps two you haven't heard of. One you may have, because now you're in martial arts studies. You may have heard of Bartitsu and Edward Barton Wright. Okay, this, and he's deliberately using black and white photos here. And also some of my work in Mexico with Maricela Ugalde, who created a Mexican martial art, one of five founders in, in the country, actually, of different systems. And I'm looking at this, why and how can people create a martial art? And under what circumstances? They might be political, social, historical, uh, physical, personal, emotional. Usually there's a combination of the personal and the social, okay? Based on their prior understanding, their prior socialization, their, their learning, their education, and schooling in martial arts, and their vision for the future as well. So I'm using Bartitsu and Shalam with Jeet Kune Do, but of course there's a conference about Bruce Lee, so I'm, I'm primarily, you'll be happy to say it's about Bruce Lee, but a few slides about other things. Um, I'm going to use that, and hopefully we can test it out. So I'm using you guys as a sounding board for my theory, and if I'm wrong, okay, I'm, def I'm happy to, to change things. So one of the things that influenced me, and when I wrote the abstract, I thought I'd better put some theory in, better put some ideas, and this is a book that I, I read a few years ago, and I, I was lucky enough to, to be able to review as well. Uh, it's about Chris Schilling, and he's quite a big figure in the sociology of the body. He's written, about, actually, almost got a, a, a monopoly of books on the body, actually. Look, at you Google it, okay, with, particularly with sage publishers, but... One of the books is a bit different, it was very interesting, was about pragmatism. It was about the, obviously, the American philosophy and then a lot of American examples, actually. So we had Emerson and James and Dewey and other, other great scholars. And what Chris Schilling does is try to make it in sense of <clears throat> how people change in their environment, how they become innovative and creative <clears throat> at times of crisis. So these crises might be economic, they might be in, you know, with imprisonment, it might be with injury and illness, and how, what we can do based on previous habits. But I'm also putting habits here with a bracket, because I know this is a key concept in some areas of, mar oops, some areas of martial arts studies, um, relating to the habitus. So, you know, for example, fighting scholars collection, various other debates. And because you could say, well, you could argue, yes, it's a habit of an individual, but it's also a habit that we develop as martial artists. So it's an individual habit, but a lot of that's pre-programmed. So, for example, I read a book recently that talked about habits in society, it's like brushing your teeth. I imagine most of you all brush your teeth or someone, at least last night, or maybe the after effects of last night, or whatever. You know, you, you probably do it, what, twice a day, like dentists recommend, or depending on the country, like in Mexico, they actually do it three times a day, because dentists recommend that. And this is, this is developed before you were born, and it'll probably be done in it's a situation developed for future generations, problems in society, which are tooth decay, etc. And martial arts can be seen in a more complexified manner, at least for us, it might be more complex. 
uh, that there are systems based on previous knowledge that hopefully future generations of society can use based on problems we may encounter, which could be via interpersonal violence, maybe health issues. So martial arts are created for different purposes. Okay? So it's not always about fighting. We know Jeet Kune Do, as I called into the other day, you know, it's very much about self-effectiveness in fighting. Other martial arts might be created or evolved, adapted for, for example, the, an identity of a clan or a family, a lineage, a, a community as well. So different purposes in that way. So hopefully I'm, I'm feeding into those. Another theory I came, I kind of added later on, which is an old, older theory, or in the sense of what the book is, uh, the sociological imagination. Some of you may know this well. It's a very nice book to teach undergrads. So actually, we teach our first years with this, some of these ideas. So the idea is that we can understand society through its individuals, through its, their biography, through their history. That we're never just an island, a total individual, but we're connected. We're kind of interconnected through our history, through perhaps, for example, a problem we have, such as um, it might be poverty, it might be a failure in education, maybe based on something else. It might be based on our social class background. It might be based on, on the way we, where we grew up. Who we, who we interact with. So, that, so here we have an interesting quote. We've got the sociological imagination enables us to grasp history and biography and the relations between the two within society. That's its task and its promise. So the idea that you know, sociology in that sense develops an imagination, a way of thinking. And I think that it actually works quite well with pragmatism, the idea that we develop habits, we develop it in, through which are socialized, not just our pure habits, we have a crisis, which is personal, but also social, and we can be creative for ourselves, but hopefully for others. It's relational in that way. Okay. So I mentioned a few things like injury and illness. We know that Bruce Lee, for example, had, had, had been sick when he was younger. We also had an injury, a back injury, enabled him actually in many ways to write. One of the basis of what we have now is the Tao Jeet Kune Do. Okay, it might have been a teacher-student relationship and how sometimes you break off from your teacher, create another organization, which a lot of you probably have experienced or, or witnessed or are involved with, or you may even create your own martial arts. There's lots of things going on there that are social, and there may have been also links to laws and, and violence and, and perceived risk. Uh, so I've got, I was thinking when I was traveling, like, what's going on? What, what, what can I formulate a theory or a template? Um, it could be understood in three ways, but I've put in down six points. Uh, First one is like they've got to be a. Normally, you probably agree with me that most martial arts are created by martial artists who are practitioners, have some experience. Although you could might be able to create video games. Another, I know that one of the next presentations has some elements of technology. You might nowadays be able to do something with martial arts without having done martial arts. But the actual physical martial art training, learning, especially in self-defense situations or combat sports, probably done by people with one or more martial arts in their repertoire. Probably a combination, more than one martial art typically. Um, they must. Achieve a level of competence, confidence, and charisma, which is something uh, my colleague Dave is going to talk about later, the affect and charisma of, of Bruce Lee. So they, in the sense that gather a following, to have a, you know, to, for example, have, to be a guru or to be a sifu, you've got to be able to convince people to follow you and have that some sense of authority. You know, that links to you being a practitioner as well. Okay. You often, well, this, maybe this one I'm a bit more doubtful about, but you're not often the, the top person in the school. So, for example, Bruce Lee wasn't recognised as the, the top student. He was the most famous celebrity student, should we say, of Bruce Lee. Oh, of Ip Man, sorry. Um, he had a seniors, obviously, who taught him. Like Wong Shuang Lung was mentioned in it yesterday. Yeah? Wong Shuang Lung created his own style of Wing Chun, but he didn't create his own martial arts because he already he completed the system with the weapons and many other things. He's seen as one of perhaps the inside students, indoor students. But Bruce Lee, fortunately, was not. He had, as we know, he had many problems with his classmates based on his ethnic background. Okay. Um, so they may not have that kind of lineage. That's probably why they seek something else, seek to create something else. And they should also identify a problem and face a personal, political, social crisis that aggrieves them. So normally a combination of the two. So it's not just about them, although primarily it may be perceived in that way, but there's something else in society that enables them to do that. That constrains and enables the structures do. Okay. And they might devise a solution for the revised fighting human development training system. So it might be a bit more about human development. So Shalam is a bit more about that, really. It's really about developing Mexicans from the inside out, as, again, developing them, cultivate them in many ways. Or it might be more about fighting, free, freeing themselves from classical, you know, liberating them from classical karate, whatever it is. And it could be a, a human training system as well, physical culture. Of course, we are, they are humans, so they will, obviously, we're, we're mortal. And with the passing of the founder, whenever it is, there's obviously going to be change, maybe potential chaos as well. We look at the history of many martial arts organizations, how they may split into different factions. Now, there might be three governing bodies, there might be one, there might be someone claiming they have the whole truth. Not, you know, and this is another story, perhaps, but in many ways. Perhaps I don't want to divert too much, but there's going to be constant creativity. So with creation comes creativity and recreativity, and recreation as well. So Ji Kune Do, just look at this. Um, well, we know that Bruce Lee, you know, most extensive background was in Wing Chun Kung Fu. 
in Hong Kong, the Viet Man lineage, a lot of different types of Wing Chun. Had a brief spell in, in with Hung Kyun or Hung Ga. Um, primarily, of, we, we, well, some of his biographies say that because he needed to have some flashy moves and more to, for demonstrations, but also he had incorporated the back fist and some of the techniques later from other Chinese martial arts. Had some experience of judo, karate, kali, taekwondo, etc. So he exchanged, obviously, the sidekick. Some of the things we know in Into the Dragon and many of the films are not from Wing Chun. There are techniques from other martial arts that, you know, higher kicks, which go against some of the principles he learned earlier on, but often from learning from fellow martial artists, with cross-training. Okay? And some of his students as well showed him things. And obviously, he was very adept, a very talented man to be able to learn in such a short, short life, to be able to be so um, effective with those techniques. But of course, at the same time, back to the charisma and, and the, you know, the confidence, all these kind of things, the C words. Um, he was established, as we know, he's an actor. He's very good at public speaking. You see interviews with Lee, how he explains Kung Fu, how he convinces. So it's amazing. He's, you know, he redraws you in. And also, we know he's a philosophy. And I was talking earlier, Wayne, about, you know, he was studying drama. But also, he, looked at, he took all the modules in philosophy and psychology. So obviously, training the mind and how he can articulate and express himself in that way. And obviously, that helped for his demonstration to gather the following. Okay, and we know that he convinced some, you know, that the, the connection through that interesting person, the hairdresser of, of many of the stars, got him connected through that, through that charisma. Okay. But however, he wasn't the senior figure in the Man Hong Kong. He had issues, obviously, with some of the, the people. And he was only there, and he left when he was 18. So he was quite young, really, to, to leave. Uh, although he was able to come back to his father's funeral to see a man again and learn more of the dummy, he never learned the butterfly knife or the knives out nor the pole. So someone would argue, oh, did you complete the system? Well, if you ever complete something. Um, you could say he learned you know, a fair amount of the Wing Chun system, but not in its totality. And he was able to create Jun Fan Gung Fu before Jeet Kune Do as his more individualized, personalized approach, already doing more physical training and adding some of the techniques. And of course, we know about the famous fights. I remember it was Googled yesterday and we're past the most famous fight ever in Wong Jack Man, that he had a crisis in the sense that what was going on? Jeet Kune Do was born out of, yes, he won the fight, but did he win it in how he wanted to with effectiveness? Okay? Based on, he thought, lack of physical conditioning, perhaps a lack of repertoire of more powerful techniques, and perhaps he needed to develop you know, more timing, all these kind of things. And timing might be in other elements. So he started to develop this along with the philosophical aspect that enabled him to you know, make it as a, as a whole concept for others to use. Okay. So we know he's done wider research, lots of reading. So his library is extensive. We know he's underlined a lot of books, as we mentioned earlier. And he's developed a system and a concept. Now, now there's a split after his death that we know that some people teach it as Bruce taught it or how Bruce would have taught it or supposedly taught it in this year to this year or others would have said how he could have done now. Now, for example, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu exists and it's popular. Bruce would have done that, so therefore we've got to incorporate this. Or Bruce wouldn't have done this. And there's lots of you know, debates and camps and people don't get on. This is common in, in martial arts and in life, as we know. Um, so the theory is, essentially I put it in bold, a martial art is founded by a disciplined, habitual martial artist who becomes creative during personal and social crisis, or crises, you know. There's something going on that makes them do it. They wouldn't just, you don't just create a martial art for, for no reason. It's a big undertaking, it's a life project. It's something you always, you know, Bruce Lee, if he was alive today, I'm sure you can know what could develop, he may have, you know, extended the technique, the methods, it's something you can do all your life. You shape, you keep on being creative in martial arts. So there's, there are moments of creativity as well as it's a, a long-term process. Although there are overnight, you know, eureka moments, as we know with the Wong Jack Mang fight, what's going on there. These events help shape it. It's, it's always going to be fueled by further interactions. Okay. So say, all, you know, martial arts are arts and their practitioners are artists. So not most, there are some exceptions, like Vincent Van Gogh apparently was self-taught. I went to an exhibition recently. I was like, okay, I was very impressed that he sort of taught himself how to, to paint. But there are most people, most musicians, most artists, you'd probably argue that have to have some basic school, in rudimentary school, and how to hold the violin, how to do this, and obviously learning and interacting with other people. And martial arts, obviously, a fairly good example of that. Okay, so breaking that down, so the habits, as I mentioned, you know, you've got to practice them thousands. Some people say, oh, 100,000 hours, all these kind of myths of how many repetitions we need, 100,000, uh, sorry, 10,000 hours, all these 100,000 repetitions, and there are lots of things in psychology that have been used and tested and perhaps... Uh, Debated, but essentially we need to do this habitually. We need to be disciplined. We need to, and we need to learn it in some systematic way before we can have, you know, perhaps the changing. So it could be a boxer's jab. We say often we use it with students. You know, if you don't hear many boxers say, "I'm bored of jabbing. I'm not going to do any jabs this year." I think they're going to get very well in their fight, are they? You know, they've got a few punches, but they're so good at punching because they keep on making that habit. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, so you've got the habit. You've got the crisis. So I mentioned here Lee's, Lee's crisis. It could be political, social, a combination of all three. 
Um, and we know what it was, was. It was based on that. And also based, I also think that, because you couldn't see it man regularly, days before Skype, before these things, where you actually might have to have a, a conference call and these with the many masters, the many students, you, like them, Dale Spencer's talked about, yes, about the, the idea of YouTube, g gathering, giving us information about pedagogy. When the secretive culture is, it would be quite hard to have this international relationship. So obviously he, he was able to use other things available to him. Okay, and the creativity can be you know, in forms, it could be in logos. So you see you know, the art artistry of martial arts, creating your own logo, creating your own mottos. You know, we know Bruce Lee's famous mottos are downstairs, all the nice posters, yeah? You know, lots of things going on there. The designs, the curricula, syllabi, all these kind of things are showing that you can be creative and that you're an artist and that you can always modify. Even if you're, say for example, with uh, Shalam, and this is my model, basically. Sorry, I'm not very good at IT, so you see the bad lines, and I tried to add them. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be able to publish this or look better. Someone help me, please. Um, so essentially, trying to say personal, social, interwoven. Tr their personal trouble, social issues mix. But before that, you've got the habits or habitus that allows you to, to do something, be creative. That feeds back both into society and to yourself and creates a new set of habits or skills. It might be a way to punch differently, way of breathing, stance. Those things change, because everything changes. Okay. So Barton Wright, I know I've got a few minutes, so basically, example, Ed, uh, Edwardian Victorian Britain, big class differences. There weren't the seven, the nice uh, seven classes you know, we have today from the BBC survey. Yeah? There were a big difference in the rich and the poor. Uh, this was a, a martial art for gentlemen, so quite a masculine -less martial art, upper class gentleman, based on his, thank you, uh, his ways. So you've got the, you know, he's, trans he's half English, half Scottish, uh, he's an engineer, an inventor, creative person already, and he has the opportunity to cross train in martial arts, cross train in you know, Japanese judo, you've got to Swiss uh, stick fighting, all sorts of things, using, adapting it for the, the, the perceived problem of risk or robbery, and also the idea of muscular Christianity and physical culture for men, so not becoming effeminate and weak, be strong leaders, particularly the military leaders. Okay, the Ugaldi, so Marisol Ugaldi, seen as the mother, or is interesting as a female founder. Um, has a background in martial arts as well. She had started martial arts when she was a teenager in Mexico for judo, karate, kung fu, uh, kempo. And her problem, her crisis shows the problem was about national identity, indigenous heritage and pride. And often um, you know, a disgrace of, of being, having indigenous blood and, and trying to be like the Americans or try to emulate or use Asian martial arts. She thought there was a gap that we need to have, we're missing a warrior identity. And this, this, this sense of being Mexican, Mexicanidad. Okay. So this is her, she created a martial arts for that, and she's, not one, she's one of several, actually. Um, it's a very interesting case study, how they use that kind of thing. You see with the dress, the design, based on the cal movements, based on the calendar. So basically, in short, yes, it's about people and bodies, but I want to be cautious saying it's also relational. You know, we, it is about the individual, about our body self, but it's also about other people. So Barton Wright needed other people to help teach the techniques, and Bruce Lee, you know, needed Dan Santo to teach some of his classes and other people to help shape that art. You can't purely do anything on your own. Okay, like his wife cooked for him, allowed him to train nine to five every day. He didn't cook for himself. You know? need people to help you. Yeah, materials. Don Maneshi, Lorenzo Don Maneshi in Italy, talking about this. There's also, there's objects and material things as well as bodies. So I was going to test the theory, but you could probably tell me your different martial arts, what goes on, how did it found? Uh, sorry if I'm rushing through this, because I realize there's too much to say. Um, yeah, so you can look at these, some of these figures, these, you know, Choi. You just need one name, don't you? Like Kano, everyone knows who Kano was. What went on? Would this six-part theory work? Okay, so I talked about the legacy of Bruce Lee as a founder, not as an actor, etc. Saying that he had personal troubles, but social issues, based on his habit, and he was creative in that sense. And I believe it works also for Bartitsu and Shalam, other 20th century martial arts, or well, turn of the 20th century. And I believe that you essentially this is why you create a martial arts. That's my key argument. And this is why we, it's a body pedagogy as well. So it's, yes, it's an art, but it's something we learn and we interact with other people to change society potentially. Um, yeah, and I wanted to say basically, Bruce Lee, sorry, I'm going off time, but it says found in his grave, interesting, founder of Jeet Kune Do. It doesn't say father or two or whatever, or you know, loving husband or you know, star of Enter the Dragon, but they wanted to put on his grave, so found, this is what, he, for them, the family in the, and the state, this is what he's left for the world, most important for him, his creation. Um, and I said, you know, what do you, how do you want to use? This is an interesting book, for, actually for undergrad students, but make most of your time. Now, Bruce Lee was adamant that you should make, don't waste time in life, do something special. I think Jeet Kune Do was something he did for the world. He offered something, left something behind in his short life. And you can see right, Will says, you know, I don't know if I'm right, but I'm just leaving you some tools. So this is what hopefully the theory has done. It's got a few simple techniques 
to increase my chances to come out with something. So hopefully this theory, six part or three part step to understand martial arts creation is something you guys can use, adapt as you see fit. Hopefully I'll write it up. Um, yeah, now there's some references. Thank you very much, Diokon Bauer. Any questions? <clears throat> <clears throat>